welcome to my channel. I am going to walk you through the process of valuing three semiconductor stocks and analyzing their financial ratios. Comment if you have questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. The first company is LAM Research. It designs, manufactures, markets, and services semiconductor equipment. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $43.8 billion, so it's a large cap company. They're trading at $2.94 a share. And to get the shares outstanding, it's the market cap divided by the stock price. That gives you the shares outstanding, $149 million. We're going to need this number later when we calculate the value of the company. Let's look at the financials. They have really positive and strong free cash flow, two to three billion dollars a year. So it's a lot of extra cash flow to work with. Net income also looks really good. It's positive and pretty consistent and really high. Their revenue looks pretty good, although it's kind of all over the place. It peaked in 2017, dropped in 2018, came back up in 2019. But their margins are pretty similar from year to year. 21 to 23 percent. Margins is net income divided by revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. Let's look at a capital structure. They have 5.8 billion dollars of debt. The interest rate they pay in their debt is 3.06 percent and the cost of debt is 2.7 percent. To get cost of debt that's the interest rate times 1 minus the effective tax rate and they have 53% debt in their capital structure. That means they have 47% equity. And to get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And their beta is 1.28. So the stock moves a little more than a market, so it's not too volatile. And their weighted average cost of capital is 7.15%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 42 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $40.6 billion. We divide that by 149 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 272. They're trading at 294, so they're trading at an 8% premium. So it is a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're saying the stock is worth 361, so they're saying it's a buy. Simply Wall Street's value is based over the average analyst estimate. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like it was pretty steady for a while, then jumped up. It fell during coronavirus but it looked like it peaked to its all-time high, but it's come back down a little. So it could be good value. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a weak PE of 19.5. The median is 15.3. Not such a good price of sales of 4.4. The median is 1.9. The average in the entire market is 5.2. Price to book isn't so great either, 8.4. The median in the market is 2.4. The average is 5.5. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 19.5, so investors are paying $19.50 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 4.4, so investors are paying $4.40 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 8.4, so investors are paying $8.40 for $1 book value. A decent current ratio, the median in the market's 1.3, the average is 1.2. Good interest coverage ratio of 15.1, the median in the market is 4.0, the average is 12.9. Really good ROE of 43%, the median is 13%, the average is 8%. Current ratios, current assets over current liabilities, I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they're at 3.4, so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. 
ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they are 43%. So they provide great value to the equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they are 15.1. So they can easily cover their interest payments. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. The only other company I did in the same industry as LAM Research is Applied Materials. LAM Research has a little better PE, but Applied Materials is better in price to sales and price to book. They're both doing fine in current ratio. They both have strong ROEs, but LAM is better. Applied Materials has lower debt and higher market cap, but they're both really big companies, 43 billion, 55 billion. And dividend yields, LAM is 1.73% and Applied is 1.59%. So to summarize, I value the company at 8% premium, a sell, but they have solid financials and their ratios look pretty good. The second company is NXP. This company is a Dutch semiconductor manufacturer. Let's get started with the model. They are also a large cap company at 36.6 billion market cap. They're trading at 125 a share. And their free cash flows look pretty good and healthy. They had a really big free cash flow number in 2018. Their revenue is positive, but it's a little bumpy. It's really low in 2016 and 19, but much higher in 2017 and 18. So it looks like they had a lot of expenses in those two years. Their revenue looks pretty consistent, although it seems to be on a decline. It's lower in 2019 than 2016. Let's look at a capital structure, $7.4 billion of debt. They pay 5% interest on their debt and the cost of debt is 4.65%. They have 44% of debt in the capital structure, which means they have 56% equity. Their beta is 1.4, so the stock is a bit more volatile than the market, but it's not too bad. We use the capital asset pricing model to figure out the cost of equity, that's 13%, and their WAC is 9.4%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $43 billion. We divide that by 293 million shares. And we get to calculate stock price of 145. They're trading at 125, so they're trading at a 14% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at 138, so they're also saying the stock is undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like it's been up and then came back down, then came up and then down again, but it's at a pretty high point right now. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a really bad PE, a weak price to sales and a weak price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 150. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 4.1. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 3.9. Good current ratio, decent interest coverage ratio, and a weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they're at 1.8. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 3%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2, they're at 1.7. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on advanced micro devices, Intel, Marvel, Micron, Nvidia, Skyworks, and Texas Instruments. NXP is right here. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. They're worse than the average in PE, but they are better than the average in price to sales and price to book. Even though I said these ratios are weak, I was comparing it to the entire market, but you should always compare it to companies in the same industry. Current ratio, they're below average, but 1.8 is just fine. They have the worst ROE at 3%, the average is 22%. They have more debt than the average, the average is 21%, they're at 44%. They're not a small company at 36 billion market cap, but much smaller than the average because there's some really big companies in this industry. Their dividend yield is 1.2%. Intel pays the highest in the industry at 2.66%.
The average is 0.9%, so they are above average. There are a bunch of companies that don't pay a dividend at all. To summarize, I value them at a 14% discount and the ratios are decent, not so great. The third and last company is Marvel Technology. Marvel offers a broad portfolio of data infrastructure semiconductor solutions spanning compute, networking, security, and storage. Let's get started with the model. Also a large cap company, 26.4 billion market cap. They're trading at $39 a share. And their financials are a bit rocky. You see a negative here and then a bunch of positive free cash flow. And their net income is really small in 2017. It jumps back up in 2018. It falls in 2019 and it jumps way back up in 2020. When you invest, you want consistency, whether it's consistently bad, consistently average or consistently good. You really need to know the future or at least have a decent idea of the future because if it's totally unknown, then you have no idea whether to bet against or bet for a stock. Their revenue looks decent. It jumps from 2017 to 2019, but then falls in 2020. Let's look at a capital structure. $1.4 billion of debt. They pay 6% interest on the debt. So that's the cost of debt, 6%, because they don't pay taxes according to their income statement. They only have 14% of debt in their capital structure, which is pretty low. 86% equity. And to get the cost of equity, we need the beta. And that beta is 1.02, so the stock moves with the market. The cost of equity is 10.15%, and their WAC is 9.6%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $15 billion. We divide that by 681 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $21.73. They're trading at $39. So they're trading at a 78% premium, so it's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street is also saying the stock is overvalued at $23.50 a share. I couldn't value this company using my traditional discounted cash flow model, so I had to use my alternative model. My alternative model looks at the growth of the free cash flows for the past few years and extrapolates that out 30 years. I built this model specifically for Tesla, and it's interesting to see that this model actually coincided with simply Wall Street's number. Let's see where the stock has been trading at. So it looks like it's pretty much trading at its all-time high, so it's doing really well during coronavirus. So it does seem like the stock may be overvalued, but if you feel the company is going to do really well in the future, you may feel differently. Let's look at the financial ratios. A somewhat weak PE, a weak price of sales, and a good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 16.7. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 9.8. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 3.0. Good current ratio, decent ROE, and a really bad interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 2.2, that's good. I like to see between 1.2 and 2. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 18%, so that's not too bad. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they cannot cover their interest payments with their operating income. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on advanced micro devices, Intel, Micron, NVIDIA, NXP, Skyworks, and Texas Instruments. Marvel is here, and if they have a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they are much better than the average in PE. They are worse in price to sales. They are much better in price to book at 3.0. The average is 9.7, so they have a good balance sheet. Current ratio is below average, but 2.2 is fine. The ROE is a little below average at 18%. The average is 22%. Debt is better than average at 14%, average is 21%, and they are small in market cap compared to the others in the industry at 26 billion. They have a lower than average dividend yield at 0.61%, the average is 0.9%, Intel is highest at 2.7%. So to summarize, I value them at a 78% premium. 
and their ratios are a bit weak. So let me know what you think of the video, leave a comment, I reply to all comments. If you want to see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.